guys, this is Tamara Hill here. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about codependency. And um, I'm actually getting ready to go into a session. And so um, in that session, our discussion today is codependency. So I thought it might be something that you might be interested in. So when you hear the word codependency, what comes to mind for you? Um, is codependency basically an overindulgence in a relationship or another person? Is codependency for you a um, emotional and psychological attachment that might be unhealthy? Um, is codependence in your mind um, a relationship that includes um, abuse and neglect and, and withdrawal and isolation and guilt and anger. Um, so what is codependency for you? Um, I, interestingly, I asked a lot of my clients what they thought codependency was. And um, for the most part, many answered with different responses. Um, I was really shocked and surprised um, to hear how different their perception of codependency was. So I figured that today it might be a really good thing for me to discuss this with you and kind of get your perception um, and also engage you in a very important topic of discussion. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the stages of codependency, but first I'll define what it is for you. Um, codependency, I often explain to my clients, is basically a fusion of two people in such a fashion that they're so interconnected that the end of one individual individual, mainly one individual, but sometimes it can be two, one individual becomes so fused with the person that they lose their identity. They lose their individual feelings. They lose their individual thoughts. Um, they also lose their independence. Um, for them, um, codependency, so sorry, I don't know if you can see that message, but um, for them, codependency is basically um, an inability to be individualistic. Um, and it really is a fear of of losing a person, of losing control of the other person, of losing control of their own thoughts and feelings. Um, I, I think I may have said it earlier, it's, it's a fusion of two individuals. And unfortunately, that fusion is not healthy. It's not the kind of fusion that occurs between two in love married people um that kind of fusion where you um you know you separate from your your family and you fuse with your new husband or your new wife it's not that kind of a thing um codependency is very unhealthy um it is traumatic for a lot of people especially if domestic violence is involved or some kind of manipulation or um some kind of um, neglect. So it's not a healthy thing. It's, it's actually very unhealthy. Now, when two people can fuse together in a relationship and be loving and be equal and be happy and at peace and, and just kind of experience the beauty of their love together, then that's a wonderful fusion of two people. Um, but unfortunately, that fusion of two people does not occur in codependency. So there are three main stages, and I want to point these out because a lot of my clients um, have had concerns that maybe they're also experiencing these things so i want to bring them to your attention and i want to discuss them a little bit with you and um, i welcome your reactions below in the comments section um, i also welcome your questions just to see what you think of this particular topic um, because it is a topic that a lot of women are very concerned about so um, let's go ahead and talk about the stages so what typically happens in a relationship between two people when it is new what typically happens in those relationships. Um, for a lot of people, um, the, the start of relationships are so intriguing. It's romantic. It's fun. It's exciting. Um, it's something that kind of allows you to leave reality and experience kind of like a fantasy. You know, you start to fall for the person. Um, you start to kind of, you know, weed through their persona and you start to kind of separate, you know, who they are socially from who they are personally. And it really is intriguing. Um, for me as a therapist, any kind of a relationship that I have been in with a guy, um, it has always been interesting for me to kind of psychoanalyze them. Um, and not so much psycho psychoanalyze them as much as just get to know them and to kind of separate their, their social self from their personal self. It really is intriguing for me. Um, I once dated um, a guy who... Um, 
was actually from from Ireland. Um, he was born in the U.S., but he lived in Ireland. And he said to me one time, um, he said, you know, what I really love about you and I find attractive about you is the simple fact that I can pick and pull you apart. Like I can pick and pull the therapist apart and I can get to know who you are aside from your professional self. And so um, he found that intriguing and I actually found it more intriguing than he did um, as we went along in the relationship. But um, a lot of people are just, you know, attracted to that that pursuing part of the relationship trying to understand the other person um, in that stage however if there is codependency then that's usually when the individual who's being abused or traumatized in some way by the other person that's when they become obsessive and um, they live and breathe the person there is no separation everything that that person does is somehow connected to the other person in the relationship there is no separation there is no um, differentiation between the two because you're constantly together around the clock all the time you're constantly talking constantly texting constantly together there is no separation that can really turn into very unhealthy relationship boundaries it really can you need that time to kind of separate and keep your individuality while you're beginning that relationship and for a lot of people who are codependent that is not happening um, what's happening is they're so fused that there is no individuality there is no separate activities there is no difference between that person or the other person um, there really is a fusing of of two um uh, to people and it's unhealthy so that is that is stage number one okay stage number two there's three stages so stage number two is basically um kind of where the person is becoming more and more aware of the codependency and and when they become more aware of the codependency and they start seeing some problematic areas in that relationship that's when they start to minimize the impact of that codependency they start to say it's not that bad or no you're wrong that's not what's happening um when other people question them or challenge them um they also get very defensive um toward people who suggest that maybe they're codependent and in the relationship they also begin to have more conflict with the other person in the relationship they also begin to experience negative feelings negative thoughts about the relationship and sometimes even negative self thoughts i'm not good enough i'm not pretty enough i'm not smart enough i'm not what he wants i'm not what she wants um and then you also get um anger and resentment and you also get withdrawal and sometimes addictive behavior so this is when you're going to start seeing substance abuse this is when you're going to start seeing um, alcohol addiction and um, maybe even a return of eating disorders. Um, and you might also see psychotic symptoms because of the stress start to emerge. So hearing and seeing things that are not there, having delusions, false beliefs that are not true. Um, a lot of things begin to happen in this middle stage of codependency and it is not a healthy um, stage at all. Okay, so lastly, stage three is um, basically the emotional and behavioral events that are happening in the relationship begin to take an emotional toll on the two people in the relationship. So you might start seeing, um, um, you might start seeing things like um, depression and anxiety emerge. You might start seeing sleep problems and eating problems. You might start seeing gastrointestinal issues or headaches, migraines, stroke symptoms, um, heart conditions. This is the stage where things begin to get really serious because the first stage was all wonderful and, and, and fantasy driven. The middle part of codependency is, oh my God, this can't be happening to me stage. It's basically the idea that how did I miss all these signs that this person was unhealthy? And then the third part of that codependency stage is experiencing um, emotional and psychological turmoil as a result of the relational patterns. Um, so these are typical uh, uh, stages for those who are in codependent relationships. And so it's important that you keep in mind that this is how the progression is. It starts off wonderful, reality hits home, and you might try to deny it, the person might try to deny it, and then the end part of that is um, uh, personal reactions or physiological responses to the abuse. Um, and I call some codependency abuse because what happens is um, the person who is is 
the dominant one in the relationship, they tend to dictate what goes and what does not go. Um, and that especially happens in domestic violence situations. Um, so you want to be careful with that. Um, so I, you know, I welcome your questions. I welcome your comments. This is a very important important subject and I think it's something that we need to discuss a little bit further I don't think there's enough um, information or articles about this so we need to talk about it um, and um, next week I'm going to be posting a video blog about some of the ways that you can protect yourself or some of the ways that you can protect somebody else who may be in a codependent situation um, so in the meantime I welcome all your comments and your questions and stay tuned for next week as I post some of the things that you can do or the person or someone else can do or someone that you love and care about can do um, um, to cope uh, if in a relationship with with someone who is codependent. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Um, again, my name is Tamar Hill. And if you want to comment below, please do so. I look forward to your messages. And as always, I wish you well. Bye, guys.